Okay, so I've just got six maps open again, and I've changed the option there under base maps. You can see you've got the foreground and the background. So the background has a map with contour lines and some other useful things. So I want that as well. Uh, so I've already saved that, or captured it and saved it into the, uh, the same folder as everything else, and I've just called it uh, Moji Library Map Site Locality. So I've saved it there. You can, of course, save your own copy if you like. Um, and then I've got the scale there. At the same scale, I had the locality uh, satellite image before. So, back into Revit now. I've opened up that site locality view. And what I might do is rename that. We'll call that site locality sat for satellite. And then I will duplicate that uh, again. Just with um, This time I will do duplicate with detailing, even though I'm going to delete that satellite image in a moment. You'll see why I'm going to keep it temporarily. And uh, so I will straight away rename that. We'll call it site locality map. So remember, all of these views are just for you to work in. No one else is going to see them. So the names are there just to remind you. And so if you remember this satellite image showing the locality had the scale there with 60 metres as the size. So that's what I have on the other one. And uh, so now by rights I can insert that image and uh, use exactly the same scale. So I'm going to insert the same way as I did before, place it somewhere, select the uh, original satellite image which has already been scaled, and then I can again select the width value there, control C to copy, select my new satellite image, find the width and then control V to paste to make it the same size, <coughs> Sorry. and then use the same method with the uh, image there selected using the move tool as I did previously you can snap that onto the corner there <coughs> and then click rotate <coughs> take the base point onto that same corner snap and then snap again <coughs> now I'm going to go one step further because Oh, that's sorry, I was going to say these should line up exactly, but actually they won't because I did move it a little bit, so that's okay. I'm simply going to delete the uh, previous image and then move this one across by eye. We know where the library is here because it's labelled. So I can simply drag that across. <coughs> but I might just check the... Uh, original to see the relationship of the street there to make sure I've got the location as close as it can be and so there we can see the, yeah, the curve in that street there is just before the boundary of the uh, library building so here yep that's pretty good good enough so now I might go through and just fix the positions of all of those images selecting them I can use the pin tool so I just need to go through each view and pin those images to make sure they don't move. It's optional, but probably a good idea. So they're all pinned now. And now, back in the satellite view, or sorry, no, the, the view with the map, we can see those contour lines. And unfortunately it doesn't have any numbers or measurements on those that I can see. I don't know if anyone's seen any uh, any numbers on the other views. Did someone say that they were two metres apart? They thought. I couldn't see actually where that was coming up. doesn't seem very clear, but we can tell really that it is very flat. So if this was an architectural project, 
then it probably would be a good idea to model the site accurately and, uh, and show that slope. But because it's an interiors project, you maybe don't need to show as much detail for the outdoors. You're focusing on, on the inside, obviously. So, so it's optional. You could model the site as being fairly flat, uh, but you do still have some slope that you'd need to indicate because you've got the, the level of the building stepping down towards the rear. So, so it's worth getting some, uh, some indication of that slope, even if it's not perfectly accurate. So we can assume maybe that this contour line is our zero. So that way we can have that height in the middle of the building of zero, and the front there will be zero as well. And then we can have it sloping down to the rear. And then we can see that the other contour line along the edge of the, probably along the edge of the river there, normally that's where it will need to slope down a little bit more dramatically. So, again, because we can't see any measurements there, it probably is in one metre increments. If it's not indicated, that's fairly standard. I don't know, has anyone seen any indication of the contours measurements other than that? Uh, there's one in the park. Oh, yeah, in... Oh, here, yeah. See, I don't think that is, that's telling us the contour value. I think so that's... So, just on the part, there's another Yeah, that's... Ah, oh, two again. Yeah, okay, so maybe that is saying two. See, so normally they'd be in um, AHD, so it'd be in that area, you'd be looking for like 100 and something, would be the, the value above sea level, and, uh, or above, yeah, so... Yeah, so I don't know. I, I think it is probably one metre increments. If it, if, it looks, if it looked fairly flat to you when you were there, um, then it would be a you know, gentle slope from here to here. So if it's a metre, we can go with that. And uh, then, again, just maybe a gradual slope. If we can find any other contours further down in the town like there aren't too many, so that means it is, is fairly flat. So, yep, that's all I need to know. Okay, so back into Revit now. I'm going to make a topo surface. So, oh, did you see? Oh, I've just found at the bottom of sort of Mount Vincent, there's 500 on one of the top of practical lines. Oh, right, okay, whereabouts was that? Mount Vincent. Um, West, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, okay, yeah, that's good actually. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, yep. There we are, yep, spot on. Okay, great. Well, actually, then, yeah, see that? Yeah, that is right. That is, yep, that's it. Pretty much, yep, I'd say so. Yep, yep, 500 above sea level or AHD, which is you know, a fixed base, but it is, yeah, pretty close to sea level. So, yeah, so then again, it should be in one metre increments from there. So, you can see pretty clearly here that it's got these hills that would be a really interesting feature, and then sloping gradually across the town. But by the time you're on the side with the library, the slope's much more gentle, and luckily for you, it doesn't have much of a slope at all beyond that contour line we can see there, going to the south. And then to the north, it's a very gentle slope going down. So that's, that's really all we need to know. And so then, back into Revit, we can, of course, see the map there already. But before I draw the topo surface, I'm just going to have a quick look at the um, south elevation. And you can see there the levels that we've already established. So from that you can tell, of course, that the ground floor is zero. And then we've already got the building stepping down a little bit, uh, shown there just with the walls having a base offset of 500. And I think you'd already measured the, the step down. It was about 400 or something, wasn't it? Or three, 380, maybe. Oh, from... 
from the ground floor to the the rear. Seven hundred was it? Was it? Oh, okay, that much. Oh, okay, right, okay. Right, okay, okay. We'll say seven fifty. That's a nice round number. So, uh, so I'm going to mark that as well. So I'm going to make it level. That'll mark or uh, establish that level or that height. Uh, just using the level tool, of course, on the architecture tab, and I'll just draw that across, and we'll call that well zero zero. So it goes at the front, uh, lower ground. Yes, always to rename corresponding views, and then I'll make that height minus 750. Good trick there to make the uh, text a bit more legible without playing around with the uh, the tags is just to change the scale. So I'm going to make this 1 to 50, and you can see there all of the tags text is now smaller in relation to the view. So of course it's easier to read text and numbers that are close together instead of manually moving them apart. So that's a really good trick. So with that, change the scale. And uh, so now I can see those different heights really clearly and I know 750 is where I want the back of the building to be. I'll worry about the walls later. Move them down afterwards. So now back in the site locality map view So we've got this contour line, which we know establishes a, uh, a height that is a little bit lower, maybe, than the back of the building. So if we know that's 750, then we can maybe say this is a metre down, so a little bit further down. And then it slopes up to zero uh, at the front of the building. So that's the way I'm going to do it. And so with the uh, topo surface tool, which is on the massing and site tab, you can now make a ground surface. So I'm just, again, under massing and site, going to click topo surface. And so I'll start at the front. So we know that, again, the ground floor is at zero. So I'm going to leave the elevation there on zero and click some points maybe going along the street. So that should be fairly flat. The street could slope a little bit, but we'll just make it perfectly flat. So I'm just going to click some points maybe either end of that street to start with. Probably do some more over to the left afterwards. And then on the corner of the building, I'm just going to bring it down slightly, even though you might realise later that you, you want to bring this up again if you want the, um, the transition or the, the ground level as you enter the building to be flush with the ground floor. But it, you'll see it will help you if you do have a little bit of a step down so that the ground is slightly below your ground floor level. Oh, there is a step up? Oh, perfect. Okay, that makes it even easier. Yeah. Most older buildings will have it. You usually want the, the floor level to be a bit above the ground. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, the accessibility. Yeah, yeah, great. That's perfect. So, yeah, so, yeah, if you can uh, keep that step, that's good. So, we'll make it minus 100. Uh, and then, uh, if you want more of a step, you can easily change that height and make it greater. You can make it minus 200. I haven't placed it yet, so I've just changed that elevation height. And now I'm going to click a cor uh, corner point on the building. And then uh, I'll just go to the other corner. So to keep that slope uh, following the, the line of the, the contour here, I'm just going to put some other points maybe on the, the corner of the outline we can see there. This doesn't need to be that precise, but just to get some more points so the slopes fairly consistent, and then down here, again, following the lines of the building there. Problem now is that the, um, 
the ground surface, as it's being made, is covering up this image. So I'm going to change the graphics there to wireframe, which will make everything see-through. So I can read the image again. And so now I'm going to change the elevation to minus 1,000. And this time I'm going to trace that contour line. So maybe just starting there at Perry Street, we'll add some more points afterwards, but I'll just follow the contour line from there. And you can see it's letting me place these points, but I can't see them anymore. So I'll just put a few more in so you can see what I mean. So again, I can place the points, which is all I really need at the moment. But before long, I'm going to have to go back and maybe edit those points. So I need to be able to select them. And to select them, we need to be able to see them. So I have to change the view to let me do that. Uh, so I'll just cancel or press escape to uh, cancel placing points. And now you can see in properties, it'll say topography. And you can then change that to floor plan to get your view properties. So I'll say floor plan site locality map. So now it's showing the view properties in the properties panel. And that's a really useful trick. You can always get to your view properties that way. And now I'll go down to view range. So clicking edit there. Then we can change the view depth first to unlimited. And then, because this is just a working view, I'm going to change the bottom to unlimited as well. So just those two settings. That's it. Click OK. And you should then be able to see the points. No? Just the low ones, the ones at minus 1,000. Um, zero and then minus 100 around the building, yeah. Okay, so you can see then that uh, it's not showing a contour line, really. And uh, we do want to see that. I'll show you how to get that up in a minute. Uh, but the points are following that uh, the contour line that's coming from the image underneath. So I'm tracing that. So I'm going to go and place some more points with the elevation still at minus 1,000. So let's just show how these contour lines come up, basically. So once I've got those points done, now I want to get some even lower points, which is ba basically going towards where the river is over here. So this I'm going to have to guess a little bit, because I can't see all of the river, but we don't really need to make it all that accurate. So I'll change the elevation now to minus 2,000, and then put some points over here as best I can, just following along the edge of the image. So, I should be able to see contour lines, but I can't, so I'm going to go and, uh, and check my, uh, my site view settings. which is on another tab. So here you can see it's on Modify Edit Surface. But if you go to the Massing and Site tab, you'll see it's mostly greyed out, but you should be able to click on the little arrow next to Model Site. So that gives you the site settings, which gives you your, your site view controls. So you can do this any any stage really. So yes, under massing and site, yeah. you've got the little arrow next to model site, that little yeah. diagonal arrow. Oh, okay. So I'm going to then change the start value there to minus, let's say minus ten thousand. 
Oops. Yep, yep, we can yep, leave that one, yep. So I'll just, uh, just try that. So I'm going to click OK. And now you can see I've got contour lines. So notice this line that's come up connecting those dots. Fairly well, but in some cases it's not following it perfectly because of what I've done up here. So these points definitely are at minus 1,000, but this point here at minus 100 is a bit too far from here so that the contour line actually is, has come across. So if I go back to place point now, I'm going to put in that height again, minus, well, I could make it minus 100. Uh, that might make it, oh no, I'll just do minus 100 just for simplicity. So again, minus 100. And uh, so then now I'll put in some points just in the middle here. And notice how that contour lines jump back to follow the points. So you sometimes do need to massage the uh, position of your points to get the contour lines to follow them because it averages out the heights of your surface based on where you place the points. That's the easiest way I can explain it. So, uh, so again here you can see it's got this contour line suddenly jumping down. That's because averaging the height from this point here, which is at zero, down to this point here, which is minus 2,000. So in between those two points is here. Right? And that's where it's made minus 1,000. But we want it to be here. No problem. I can place a new point now at minus 1,000. Right? And then put it here. And now the contour line follows the points. So essentially, as you add in more detail, it'll often follow the, uh, the values that you put in. So again here, similar problem, but, well, actually it does come through to there, so I can just keep following that through. That's pretty good. Your contour lines probably don't need to be perfect for this project, but it's a good thing to try, and it'll give you much better understanding the way the topo surface tool works. Uh, you can almost think of it as a series of, like a point cloud, and it then just drapes a blanket or a, a surface over those. And you do need to massage them a bit. It won't always... Uh, put the heights or make the heights exactly the way you want and uh, again often the way to get it to do what you want is to add more points in so to continue this now if I wanted to add more ground surface I can put in still with this at minus a thousand points continuing to follow that contour line which is always a good way to start if you're not sure follow the contours Then here I've got these points which I know I've established at minus 2,000. Now, I can't really see much here beyond, uh, beyond that point, but if I go back to one of my other views, I may be able to. So I can there, you can see. So I'll do the same as I did before in this view to make it more workable. Going to wireframe to start with and then also going back to the view properties. I can change the view range there as well to have the view depth and the bottom range set to unlimited. So I can see those points there as well. And so you can see here, well, this point probably should come around a little bit to follow the river a bit more. And then I can again go back to adding in new points at minus 2000, maybe following the curve of the river there. good and then this one well now that I can see where the river goes maybe that shouldn't be at minus 2000 maybe that should be minus 1000 so you can always select a point and then change the elevation as well so, so it'll help you sometimes to switch views as you place these points but you probably could do most of it with this uh, map view. 
and then to extend those points or to continue the topography again to conti trace the contours where possible so again we know these are minus a thousand so this part's working well but now it's lost that detail here where it sort of did that um, ballooning sort of shape. So, again, to get it to follow the contours more precisely, the reason it isn't is because it thinks these points here would be connected with land in the middle that's at the same height. What it's showing there is that it does uh, step down following that curve. So, by putting in some points at minus 100 or even zero, but I'll just do minus 100 to keep it consistent, coming down closer, you can see as I put these points in to that area, that makes this a high point, coming through the middle there, and then these lines will follow around. So again, to make it behave, the trick is add more points usually. And then, now to extend into the town area, where we know it's fairly flat, I can continue placing points at that height, minus 100 is pretty good. If you want it to be the height of the, um, the land that's adjacent to the building, if you want it to be the height of the street, which remember I made a little bit higher, then I can go back to zero. And then I'll keep placing some points that take it into the town. And that should work pretty well. Now you can see I've got a couple of problems though because we've got these funny lines coming up. So they're indicating again a sudden change in height. So that's something to be careful of. So here if I click onto this point we can see that's zero. This is zero. So if these points are all zero and we've got a line there that means that it's the points around for the problem. So again just following along here putting in more points at zero along the street there should resolve most of those issues. That's exactly what's happened. So there we are. And coming down along the street there. Okay, so that contour line is our zero height. And so maybe to finish off, I've got to decide what height is this area? Probably not minus a thousand, because that's down here where it slopes down a little bit. It's probably a little bit higher than that. So maybe I can just use a bit of judgment and place a point there that's maybe in between. So minus 500 might work pretty well in an area like that. Now you can see it's connecting this point. So what's happening there? Well, that one's at minus a thousand. So these are all minus a thousand. I made them too low. What was I thinking there? Oh, that's right. So this does come up to... Yeah, okay, so that's right. So the street slopes down there. So, in fact, these points here should slope down gradually. So here it's at zero. Maybe I can say this one is minus 200. Don't need to go too far with this, but it's worth just getting used to the way the tool works. So I'll try minus 400 for the next one and then minus 600 and so on minus 800 probably need to show much beyond this but I'll just make this one minus uh, 900 don't want to go all the way to 1000 yet and I'll delete that point right, so then these points here that are place fairly randomly, I might just drag into a better position. That's giving a good general indication of the slope. So we've got that zero contour line coming through here now that looks fairly natural. Uh, this is the minus a thousand. So that's working well for the contour line here. This one though, again, starting to look a bit unnatural, so maybe that tells us it should be lower. 
So I'll try maybe not quite minus 2,000, maybe minus 1,500. And then another good option is to copy points. So if you want to copy a point, it's easy. Once it's selected, you can click the copy tool and then just place as many as you like. If you tick the multiple option, makes that a bit easier. And there we go. So you just want to try and get the contour lines to look fairly natural and not have any sudden changes. So there we are. So that's pretty good. And uh, so before I go too much further though, I'm going to finish that even if it's not perfect because then I can save the file. You can't save it midstream while you're placing the points. You need to finish the surface and then you can save as you do normally. Now what have I done there? I've opened up an old version. That was clever. Anyhow, we'll come back to that and uh, fix that afterwards. That's not a problem. Okay, so I've got then in my 3D view a ground surface that you can see sloping. Don't worry about the fact that I'm missing the roof. That's in my other file. I'll bring that back afterwards. But uh, you can see there the slope going from uh, front to the back. Very shallow, but it's definitely something that you will notice as you make the building. So you can see the back of the building does go down into the ground a little bit. Yeah, we'll see, we know that that's only down 500, so even though I've made this, this contour line is a metre down, yeah. uh, we've got to make the ground near the building a little bit lower. So put extra points Yeah, exactly, that's it, exactly. So now I can select that topo surface, edit surface, and then around the building, I'll add some more points. So with place point, we know that at the rear of the building, if the floor level's 750 below, Maybe the ground level outside the building needs to be 100 mil below that again, so I'll make it minus 850, and then place points on the corner of the building, which shouldn't affect the contour line too much, but uh, again, around the building should bring the uh, floor level or the ground level down. So I'll just finish it like that, and then again have a look in the 3D view, and you can see then that... Oh, sorry, that's the, uh, the front of the building. So the rear of the building now is definitely now above the ground. So to test it out, I might just select all of those walls at the rear with tab and make the base offset lower than minus 850. Okay, so I might just for now make it minus 1,000. doesn't hurt to have the walls going below the ground. So there we are. So you can see now that all of those walls touch the ground or go below it. And then we know that we've placed points already at the front of the building that are at the right height and those walls have just been brought down already minus uh, 500. Okay, so the floor level there, the important thing is that the floor doesn't have the dirt or the ground running through it. That's no, entirely above. And then another way of checking that is the section so you can see I've got a section view that goes through my building. Stretch those lines out. And so in the section view, I can also see that ground slope fairly clearly with the floor level above that. Problem is that we've got the ground there potentially going into the building at the rear. So do you know the tool that will cut away the ground in that area? So I think we may have looked at this with the last project, but I'll show you again anyway. So you've got the pad tool, building pad, for that. So with again, I'm massing in sight with the building pad tool. I'm going to then... I'm going to put it on the inside edge of the walls actually, even though normally you would put it on the outside because it's an existing building. Uh, we'll just do it this way. So uh, I'm going to make the height offset from level there minus 150. And then I'll just pick the inside face of all of those walls at the rear of the building.
and with trim just make sure they're all joined. Uh, it's no harder than making a floor really, but the main difference often with the pad tool is that you will make it lower than your floor, put it under a floor quite often. So, uh, so then if I finish that now again in that section view, you can see I've got the building pad and it's cutting away the ground below the building. It will also lift the ground up. So if your building is above the ground, it will lift it up. So it does cut and fill essentially, which is what you do on a site when you need to change the ground level. So now going back into the 3D view, you can see that they're excavating the site essentially. Don't worry about the edges of the ground and the other things you can see there because when you put a floor in to cover that, you won't see those things. Oh, on the massing and site tab. You've got building pad next to parking component and site component. Yeah. Yes, so the final thing that I'll just do to finish off before I bring my roof and the other things back is I'll put the uh, walls here. Just selecting those two main walls down a bit further because you can see they're sitting above the ground level slightly. I can see the edge of the wall there, just. So I'm going to just bring... Well, I'll, I'll get all of those walls at the front, those three walls, and I'll make the base offset minus 600, should be plenty. There we are. Still see something there when I zoom out, but uh, I, think it's, I think it's OK. Oh, actually, no, sorry, this wall here and this one, so they also... Oh, this, it's just this wall, sorry, now that I'll bring down to minus 600 as well. So, so there we are, and uh, in my site view at least we can see, let's go to the one that's got things still hidden, so we can at least see the building there sitting on the ground and if we do things like turn shadows on, it's casting a shadow onto the sloping ground, which is a really difficult thing to work out, but once you've modelled the ground like this, it does it for you automatically. And that'll look much better when we have the roof and everything else that we did last week, so I'll bring that back in a moment. But, uh, but for now, that's probably all you need. And then uh, next thing, we'll look at how you can break that surface up to show things like your roads. So roads, uh, car parks, footpaths, planted areas. You can show all of those different areas using different materials, but to do that you need to break up that topo surface. Um, I'll do another video for that, but do you remember the tool that we looked at last time for that? On the same tab under Massing and Psyche. So you might remember you've got split surface, but don't use that. The other tool is subregion. And they might seem quite similar at first because they both are used to break up a topo surface. But this one here, subregions, is the one I'm going to look at. I'm going to have a go at that. That's, that's the way to do it. But I'll, I'll go through that afterwards.